Hi, welcome to the session on CM, CFA level 1. In this session, we'll discuss about the income statement and balance sheet items. Balance sheet items. How to understand the balance sheet. Understanding the balance sheet items and understanding about the balance sheets. Balance sheet is a snapshot of a company at a given date, any given date, giving details of what we own and what we owe. So we'll see now the balance sheet elements and format. The accounting issues related to the current assets and current liabilities non-current assets and non-current liabilities, measurement of different assets and liabilities, the section of the shareholders equity, like what equity consists of, the preference shareholders funds, common shareholders funds. And we'll discuss about the analysis of the balance sheet, like how we compare a company between two different periods and now we compare one company's balance sheet items with the other companies and we also discuss about uh, the liquidity and solvency of a company in a payment of its uh, you know short-term and long-term obligations liquidity talks about short-term ability and the solvency talks about the long-term ability of any company your balance sheet, it is a snapshot of what? The financial position of a company at any given date. And it, it, it comprising of, you know, the permanent assets. Assets which, uh, you know, belong to the persons, the companies, the assets, it is like real, tangible and intangible, etc. So balance sheet gives us what you know the entity owns it gives us the information what an entity owns at a given time and what it owes the externally call it as liabilities and what it you know owes to the owners of the company which is called equity so based on this we can draft an equation of a balance sheet Assets equals liabilities plus equity. So from the owner's point of view, when you calculate the owner's money in the business, the equation can be changed to equity equals what assets we have in a given date minus what external obligations we have on the same date. Assets minus liabilities will give us equity of the company or net worth of the business. The elements which we see in a, a balance sheet, the major elements include ALE, assets, the resources which are owned by a company, liabilities, the external obligations, which are to be paid to the external parties, and the equity, which is invested by the shareholders, preference and common shareholders. Equity is the owner's money. It is the owner's money, which consists of what? The capital contributed and any amount which is, you know, still reinvested in the business from the profits of the company. When you see the balance sheet, the asset section the asset section is made up of you know uh, two categories here one is the assets which can be transformed into cash called current assets in a maximum period of one year we can see these assets in a cash format cash marketable securities accounts receivable inventories and prepayments. Whenever we prepare a balance sheet, uh, 
make sure that the asset the balance sheet is prepared in a liquidity format so that we see that how the the cash is generated from these assets then followed by you can mention the non current assets like property plant and equipment then intangible assets like copyrights patents goodwill franchise fee etc mostly in uh, most of the countries at least the two years information is to be provided very recent year is in the first column and the prior years in the second and third columns so if you say like 2011 is just completed year then 2010 is a prior year then liability section of the balance sheet the external liabilities yes liabilities are all to also to be expressed in a liquidity format begin with the current liabilities and followed by the long term liabilities long term liabilities like bonds deferred taxes bank loans debentures they are all paid to be paid in the future future after a year or two years or three years but the current liabilities are to be paid whenever they become due mostly in a short period of time not to exceed one year current liabilities equity equity consists of the common shareholders funds and preference shareholders funds so the common shareholders funds are mentioned here in this example need to mention clearly what number of shares that are you know authorized by a company to be issued out of which how many shares have been issued to public what is the face value or par value of the share then if this share is issued at a price higher than this par value we call it as premium also known as additional paid in capital then any retained earnings the profits are retained in the business that should also be taken into account retained earnings then you may have kind of some incomes which are you know from the unearned portion in a sense not an income in the current period unearned portion in a sense we received income but it is still not owned by the company it is still not owned by the company okay and you need to mention even the treasury stock treasury stock is nothing but the stock which is bought back by a company stock which is bought back by a company previously issued shares are bought back like say for example we issued 7 million 732 million 853,180 shares of which you bought some shares back 12,888 shares at the rate of $1 so this amount is a contra amount minus amount here so we cannot show this amount on the asset section of the balance sheet it should be a contra amount to the equity itself so you should uh, reduce this amount from the total of the equity you need to mention the full number of shares that have been issued of which how many shares you bought back should be taken as a contra so remember never a treasury stock is shown on the asset section of the balance sheet the overall total may match but you know this amount the presentation is not correct if you show this amount on the balance sheet section asset side of the balance sheet there may be some kind of non controlling interest means you may have some other companies you know investments in the company so overall shareholders equity is 12724 along with the liabilities now when your balance sheet is prepared it is prepared in a liquidity format no what does it mean it means that 
in your assets make sure you highlight your current assets preferably they are to be presented on the top of the asset section of the balance sheet likewise the liability side you need to mention the current liabilities and remember any other assets which are near to cash called as cash equivalents should be a part of current liability likewise any liability which is to be paid in the current period by nature it may be a long term liability but a portion of long term liability is becoming in the you know uh, becoming due in the current period will be treated as uh, current liability so make sure the balance sheet is prepared using a liquidity format now while preparing the balance sheet companies may use the regulation the reporting framework like uh, gap us gap generally accepted accounting principles so using gap mostly the you know uh, liquid format we use this most liquid to least liquid means what cash balance to almost non liquid assets on the non current assets okay and in the case of ifrs we do the other way we start with the non liquid assets and we end with most liquid assets this is the difference in the accounting framework see here the assets are you you see the assets these are all non current assets then you have inventory trade accounts receivable see cash is prepared in the last position otherwise you would have begin with cash here and this intangible assets would have been somewhere here it is a non liquid to most liquid least liquid to most liquid format here you can see the other example a uh, goodwill to cash balances so it depends upon the accounting framework what we use so the asset and liabilities are to be properly classified as current and non current if they are not properly classified as current and non current it will mislead it will you know disturb our day to day operations because we maintain an amount that should be always used in the business always maintained in the business called working capital which is the difference between current assets and current liabilities so we make sure that uh, the assets are properly classified into current and non current pick up the current assets likewise the liabilities are to be classified into current and non current pick up current liabilities make sure that your current asset portion is higher than the current liabilities to have a positive working capital yeah so if you have a positive working capital it means that you are maintaining good amount of current assets to meet our current obligations yeah and in the case of ifrs you are preparing your uh, balance sheet using what least liquid to uh, uh, most liquid so you will find the same amounts at the bottom of the asset section and the liability section current and non current liabilities the classification is very very important to find the working capital to find the the liquidity position of a company so while calculating the current you know uh, uh, financial position of a company make sure that you pick up the cash and cash equivalents in a current asset section cash and cash equivalents are nothing but the amount which can be converted into cash in a short span of time you don't need to wait for long period to get these assets converted back into cash you don't need extra time to get these amounts converted back into cash 
like what we have bank balances deposits with the bank fixed deposits any kind of liquid investments in a sense the amounts invested for a short period of time maybe a 15 days one month three months four months but not for years together so at any time we can just send a mail to the company where we invested or we get just get a uh, uh, in information that we want to sell it off we can sell so we have a ready market available for this type of uh, assets like us treasury bills a commercial paper is nothing but lending money to someone else and getting a promissory note from that company that will be paying us in our 30 or 40 or 90 days time along with interest they're all you know money market funds in a sense these instruments can be sold without any pressure in the market just we need a working day they're all called what cash and cash equivalents cash and cash equivalents are to be presented on your balance sheet if it is uh, the framework is gap it has to be on the top of the assets begin with cash and cash equivalents in case of ifrs it is at the bottom of you know the asset section the next uh, main category of account current asset is the trade receivables the amount owed by our customers for the goods we delivered for the goods we sold for the services we rendered so we are delivering our goods we are selling our goods on credit so we get this money back only after some time as we agreed with the customer so this is to be mentioned clearly in the balance sheet to the extent of net realizable value nrv means what when we are selling goods like two months two million worth of credits for two months credit so you are selling in the month of november say end of november and we'll be getting this amount only at the end of january right within this you are closing your books what happens if the customer defaults customer is not able to pay so you are, reco you are recognizing the revenue in this year by closing the books as on 31st december but the uncollectability you will be experiencing in the next accounting year so that what you need to do is you need to provide some allowance for any kind of doubtful debts also you need to check the credit risk by evaluating customers from time to time you need to check that which category or which sector is facing problem where we can extend the credit where we can cut down the credit you need to evaluate the customers and their businesses after the accounts is civil the next liquid asset is inventory see inventory takes much time to get it converted back into cash why because inventory becomes sale if it is sold on credit it becomes accounts receivable from this again we collect money on the due dates it will become cash see cash is the most liquid asset this accounts receivable is a you know uh, a least liquid asset as compared to cash but inventory is a least liquid asset so if you give a ranking one accounts receivable will get two and inventory gets three why because inventory is to be transformed into accounts receivable accounts receivable will get transformed into cash so when you find cash from this inventory you need to include beginning inventory and what amount you purchased beginning inventory of 5 million purchased inventory of 25 million now you have inventory in your stores 30 million worth of goods readily available for sale still you have ending inventory of 
8 million so you sold goods worth 22 million 5 million plus 25 equals 30 you have goods available for sale 30 million but still you have 8 million worth of goods unsold as of 31st December which means you sold goods worth 22 million so this 22 million worth of goods you sold it for say 27 million so cost of goods sold is 22 and sales value is 27 you will collect 27 million from your customer but the inventory what you delivered is valued 25 million 22 million so there is a gross profit of 5 million which need to be shown in your income statement and this remaining 8 million inventory which will be sold in the next year is to be shown as a current asset here under balance sheet so if you look at your current assets based on most liquid asset to least liquid asset it is going to be like this current assets cash cash equivalents we call them as marketable securities your cash means cash and bank balances marketable securities then accounts receivable then inventory you may have some you know prepayments which are you know the amounts are paid for the future so that you will have a uh, uh, cash uh, uh, you know no cash requirements in the future because you might have paid insurance of the entire year the license fees of uh, you know next two years it's like that so future cash flows are stopped now because we paid now itself so it is also treated as a current asset but not a li most liquid asset only you will not have any future cash flow outflow now when you have that inventory of 8 million 8 million worth of inventory was purchased in the current year now it is moved to the next year as a beginning inventory now we have a doubt that whether this inventory can be sold under current market conditions uh, what is the value of the mark you know what these inventories in the in the market need to check no so we cannot just move this inventory to the next year and say that we purchased in this year you bear uh, in your you know, next year so what is the market value of this inventory so that i can take them in my balance sheet I purchased it for 8, 000, 8 million doesn't mean that uh, it will be 8 million forever. Maybe uh, due to technology, due to innovation, this product might be become obsolete, might become outdated. So there is a requirement to test this inventory value under current market conditions. So when you test this inventory value, to check whether really it is worth of this or not you should check that which framework are you using you are using us gap or ifrs under us gap we use a method called lcm lower of cost or market lower of cost or market what is lower of cost of market so for this let me give you four different values one the cost price which i purchased say at the rate of 50 dollars i purchased this at 50 dollars i have say for example 2000 units in my stock hmm? now cost or market right market if i purchase if I purchase the same product under current market conditions, what is the price I am going to pay to my supplier? That is called current replacement cost, CRC, current replacement cost, 
say I can buy it for 45 now. 45. I bought it in October for 50, but it is not now available for 45. Now, due to technology, due to you know uh, the current market conditions, I can sell this for net realizable value. I can sell this for 48. But you know, I have to spend one dollar for commissions, you know, packing, etc. etc. So net realizable value is 47. Okay, right. Now the profit which is included here is is say 1.5 dollars. I have other expenses and all, which is called floor. Floor. So 47 is the net realizable value minus uh, half dollar I'm spending on the you know other expenses so my profit is what around 1.5 dollars etc 1.5 dollars so my floor is 46.5 now 44 uh, assume that there is a profit of 1.5 dollars so it is 45.5 45.5 so i need to pick up market lower of cost or market cost is already there from this market, from these three values, we need to select the second highest of this. So 45, 47, 45.5. This is the second highest. So the market is 45.5. Now you compare the market with the cost price. Remember? Which method are we using? Lower of cost or market. So cost price is 50. Market value is 45.5, which is second highest of these three. So now we have to account at 45.5. Therefore, there is a loss of $4.5 per unit. 50 is my cost price actually, but today I'm you know recording this in my balance sheet at only 45.5 so there's a loss of 4.5 dollars on inventory valuation so 4.5 dollars times 2000 units this is my closing stock as on 31st december i have you know nine thousand dollars worth of inventory in my stock i lost this is a loss on inventory Actually, 2,000 units times $50 is a cost, which is 100,000, 100,000. But now I'm considering 45.5, which is 91,000. So my inventory is reduced to, value is reduced to 91, booking a loss of 9,000. This 9,000 is to be absorbed in the current year profit and loss account itself loss and revaluation of the inventory which is a part of our cost of goods sold it will reduce our gross profit once you recognize the loss in the books using us gap or ifrs lcm lcnr now, whether reversal is permitted or not, we are using US GAAP, reversal of prior write downs are not strictly allowed. So you cannot reverse them back, but reversal is allowed in case of IFRS. Then the next difference uh, in uh, uh, between GAAP and IFRS regarding inventory is, we use inventory cost flow methods like first in first out, last in first out, simple average, weighted average methods. Gap is silent about last in first out method. So if you want, you can use last in first out method. Just mention uh, disclosing the notes, whereas IFRS strictly does not permit last in first out method. We are not supposed to use LIFO method under IFRS. 
this is about uh, current assets cash and cash equivalents uh, accounts receivable and inventory the next thing is like you know non current assets non current assets are of two types tangible and intangible tangible assets like property plant and equipment they have some physical substance they have some definite lifetime except land therefore they are to be depreciated an amount that is decreased from the assets for their usage in the business as you start using it the value the performance of the asset will get you know uh, will get decreased called depreciation as the land does not have any a definite lifetime and it won't be depreciated so we do not provide any depreciation on the land in addition to the depreciation we may look for any kind of you know uh, impairment losses like say for example a property a, a building a machinery a vehicle say a vehicle of 50000 after depreciating in 2 years time of 20000 now the net book value is 30000 this is a carrying value so you purchased it 50000 and the depreciation accumulated so far is 20000 the carrying value of the asset is 30000 but there is an advanced asset available in the market then just you are checking in the correct market condition that if i dispose it of what amount i'll get so the the market value in the current market condition fair market value is say for example 15000 okay 12000 10000 see drastically down as compared to the carrying value if you can sell this asset for 12000 to replace with a new advanced asset there is a loss right there is a loss okay this is a loss because of not using the asset here it is because of what the advanced technology available the performance better performance we get from the new asset so this old asset will not have the market value and it has to be reduced to the current market prices called impairment so you need to look at the impairment of the assets if the market value of the assets of the depreciation are much you know uh, different from the carrying value so carrying value is to be compared with the fair market value to check whether any impairment exists if you find any impairment that has to be booked as a depreciation charge it to accumulated depreciation account and this cannot be reversed under gap it can be reversed under afrs assets also can be revalued like land land value goes up we want to revalue the asset so revaluation is allowed in ifrs but in gap it is not allowed okay so property and plant and equipment we we'll look for the impairment losses but it is not reversible under us gap whereas in ifrs Yes, they can reverse it. Then the disclosure of these assets with the schedules, what amount we have in the beginning, how much we purchased, how much we depreciated, amortized, and uh, disposed. This is all you need to show in the balance sheet, notes to the balance sheet, the appropriate schedules. The next. Uh, non current asset is intangible asset which do not have any physical substance intangible assets do not have any physical substance like patents licenses trademarks copyrights goodwill we 
invest lots of money on this kind of assets and these assets may have some definite lifetime like say for example we purchase patents license trademarks for a period of say 10 years the the ownership is given to us only for 10 years we paid say for example 10 million 10 million for 10 dollars uh, 10 years so we need to amortize because we know the definite lifetime of this particular asset so amortize over its useful life like same like a depreciation except goodwill when you acquire goodwill it should be recorded as an asset but do not amortize it you can check for impairment that any impairment that is going to take place at the each balance sheet date you can look for impairment of goodwill but do not amortize any goodwill then some financial assets the amounts which are invested in a you know to, to get some returns now we have some surplus cash which is not required for the next two or three months time so you can convert them into some short-term investments so these investments are classified into three types trading available for sale and held to maturity the trading securities are very short-term investments in which we invest this money in the equities like shares etc and the bonds so it can be equity it can be debt capital it can be uh, equity securities it can be bond securities and you know these values always look at fair value at 31st december okay available for sale securities are same like your trading securities but you know the time period as compared to trading securities can be like six months to one year one and a half years two years like that but at any time if you are in the need of money you can sell them off then held to maturity you invested say for example twenty seven thousand dollars wait for three years to get thirty thousand so this investment is held for three years period to get thirty thousand so the maturity value is thirty thousand but you need to wait for three years time so this three thousand is the gain which you are going to get after a waiting period of three years that is called held to maturity only you will have debt instruments in held to maturity like bonds debentures etc so what you need to understand is the trading securities consist of equity and debt securities they are always measured at fair market value fair market value say we invested five thousand dollars in the month of october now on 31st december the value of this investment is 5250 fair market value yeah giving us a profit of 250 dollars so our income statement you need to record an income of 250 dollars and on the balance sheet the investment value is to be recorded at 5250 okay so whatever the trading securities we have always they are to be compared with the fair market value there may be a loss there may be a gain so here in this example it is a gain that should go to PL account your income statement and balance sheet you should mention at a fair market value now in the financial asset next category of investment is available for sale securities available for sale securities which also include the equity securities like shares and debt securities like bonds so available 
for sale securities consist of equity securities and debt securities these securities are also recorded at a fair market value say for example in the month of october we bought at 10000 some securities which can be sold at any time but not like trading securities we keep this amount aside for a value and on 31st december the value of the investment is now 10150 so there is a gain of 150 dollars it is available for sale securities this is not sold within the same year so maybe like six months to one year one and a half years we may hold it for some time therefore it should not go to income statement this amount should be a part of your comprehensive income and it should be treated as other comprehensive income not operating income it should not be taken in income statement it should be taken in oci other comprehensive income okay and on the balance sheet yes it should be shown at its fair market value 10150 10000 original value plus the unrealized gain of 150 dollars the third category that is held to maturity because you are say for example investing 27000 dollars it is only a debt security not the shares so you don't have any fair market value fluctuations and all so not applicable for any kind of fair market value what you can do is every year say for example this is to be held for three years every year how much you are going to get your 30,000 right 30,000 so from this you need to find out how much value that is each year you are going to take as income that should be taken here and the remaining portion you will write like say for example 27000 plus say 1200 is the income you are booking overall if you wait for 3 years you are getting 3000 say you are right, you are recognizing 1200 as a profit this year so 27000 plus 1200 will become 28200 second year the investment value what you calculated is 28200 and from three just 3000 you took say for example 1500 as income so it will become 29700 third year it will become 30000 so you have to hold this investment until its maturity period and do not look for any kind of fair market values we know that 27000 worth of investment made for a period of 3 years to get 30000 but in between don't look at the fair market value because investment is not reflected with the fluctuations in the fair market value so held to maturity no calculations required on account of fair market value fluctuations in the liability section let's begin with the liquid liabilities the amounts which you pay in a short span of time called current liabilities current liabilities begin with the trade payables trade payables are also known as accounts payable it is the supplier balance so we purchased goods or we got services done by other party but the amount you are going to pay in the future maybe two months three months so they allowed us some credit until then it becomes a current liability most of the companies trading and you know manufacturing industries the major portion of current liability you can see in a trade payable or accounts payable the accounts payable or trade payables are open accounts means what mostly the oral promises so with a good relationship trust between the supplier and the customer we maintain this but if any kind of written promise is required that we need to give some check or promissory note it becomes what notes payable so we give a document 
let's say for example we buy goods now and uh, two months dated check we gave it to our supplier it becomes notes payable then accruals any expenses of the past and current still not paid it becomes accrued expense like last uh, month electricity bill is not paid okay some commissions we haven't you know updated and it will be updated by 10th of this month and will be released by 15th so until then it is accrued expense so some expenses of the prior period still not paid are to be accrued and shown under current liability section any incomes received in advance for the future period for the goods to be delivered for the services to be rendered are called deferred income like say for example we received an income for the goods to be delivered in the month of may june and you received this money in april so the income received in advance is nothing but unearned revenue unearned revenue or deferred revenue this will become income only upon delivering the goods in the coming months then non current liabilities mostly non current liabilities of any company include bdl that is bonds issued debentures issued and any loans taken from banks all these components will carry some interest mostly they are you know borrowed on long term basis like 5 years 10 years 20 years until then need to pay interest deferred tax liabilities these tax amounts are to be calculated now but will be only paid in the future because of the future events like we recognize some income but income is not at booked into the system we didn't record them in the books because some you know extra work is to be provided like in the case of long term construction contracts maybe some kind of timing differences in that case we need to hold this amount of tax liability until you finalize the income till then you need to show it as a deferred tax liability under long term liability section of the balance sheet then equity the last section of a balance sheet called equity consists of the common shareholders funds preference shareholders funds retained earnings then you have any oci other comprehensive income reserves the gains on remember afs available for sale securities any premium collected while selling the shares then if you have any non controlling interest somebody invested in our company minus the treasury stock any stock of the same company purchased back we bought our shares back so always remember the treasury stock is a contra item on equity it is to be deducted from the other items on the equity section but never never just because of the minus sign don't show it on the asset section of the balance sheet it should be always on the liability section of the balance sheet under equity and it should be shown as a contra against the equity amounts then when you prepare a balance sheet how do you analyze the balance sheet you say that it is a snapshot of a business it's a financial position of a business yes we analyze the components of balance sheet items keeping in view that whether the company is in a position to pay its obligations on time or not it's called liquidity liquidity is the ability of a company to pay on its short term obligations maximum period of 1 year so we check that whether the company is in a position to pay these obligations on time 
or not readily available cash so the company's ability to convert assets into cash to pay for operating needs not to buy you know factory building not to buy like a, a vehicle not to repay a loan but at least you know we have expenses coming up we have salaries we have rents we have purchases okay we have some consumables we need to have enough money to pay for these so you say that the liquidity is good solvency means okay you are following this okay fine but there is a requirement coming up that we need to buy a new machine is a requirement coming up that you need to repay loans so whether the company is in a position to pay for long term assets or repayment of loans or dividend payments so the company's ability to pay long term financing obligations we use solvency analysis you see that what is the capital structure of the company financial structure of the company and what are the long term requirements we have based on that we need to test the company's ability that whether the company is able to pay this amount or not and we use some kind of analytical tools like common size analysis under common size analysis we express each and every item of balance sheet over total assets like say for example under current asset you mention say cash 2000 then other current assets then non current assets but total assets or say for example 100000 so the current asset portion on the total assets is 2% so we use the balance sheet for analysis purpose this way that how much of each asset each liability each equity item that we are maintaining against the total of the assets common sense analysis in the common sense analysis in the balance sheet each and every item is expressed as a total of assets then we calculate some balance sheet ratios to check the current financial position of a company like current ratio current assets divided by current liabilities and if you want to know most liquid portion of the liquidity position we find quick ratio quick ratio by deducting inventory and prepayments from current assets to pay the current liabilities okay so current ratio is the ratio between current assets and current liabilities and the quick ratio is the ratio between very quick assets divided by current liabilities so quick assets and current liabilities are to be measured to check the very conservative level of liquidity liquidity level of a company in the balance sheet we mention the assets sometimes we may see the company one company with the other company okay we want to benchmark we want to check how we are performing how our assets are used how the assets are used in terms of the other assets so the assets and liabilities are to be expressed as a percentage on the overall assets like say for example 58.46 how did you arrive at cash 1900 is expressed as a percentage on the total assets so each and every asset is expressed as a percentage on the total asset likewise each and every item on the liability section is expressed on the total of your liabilities and equity amount which is again anyway correct total assets it is same right so what i mean to say is that each and every item on your balance sheet should be expressed as a percentage on the total of assets like this 750 is expressed as a percentage on 3250 okay 
this 740 is expressed as a percentage on 3250 this 150 is expressed as a percentage on 9750 to see that what is the amount each asset each liability each equity item which we maintain in terms of PFS, like say 58.46 on total assets 9.23 of goodwill on the total assets 1.54 on the total liabilities and equity we have the shareholders equity so under common size balance sheet each component of balance sheet should be expressed as a percentage on the total assets then to find the liquidity position of a company we calculate the liquidity ratios which include current ratio the ratio between current assets and current liabilities preferably you need to have you know higher amount of current assets as you know compared to current liabilities say for every two dollars of current asset we have one dollar of current liability uh, so this makes sense that we have sufficient amount of current assets to, to pay current liabilities but you know current assets uh, consist of like you know cash marketable securities receivables and prepayments inventory in that inventory and prepayments are not easily converted back into cash so you can't expect them to be converted back into cash to pay current liabilities therefore just only take cm and accounts receivable cma divided by current liabilities ignore inventory and prepayments so it is a little bit conservative way of looking at your current position using only cash and bank balances marketable securities accounts receivable over current liabilities so when you say the current ratio 2 is to 1 is a standard norm 1 is to 1 is okay with a quick ratio because we have most liquid assets here in current assets in the numerator you want to have most liquid the moment you want cash you know you want to check that whether we have cash availability or not usually you don't need much money for every requirement for the entire month but at least you have money in your hand or not even this account receivable also removed to calculate the cash ratio that is only cash and bank balances with the marketable securities to pay current liabilities usually a 0.5 is to 1 is okay for every one dollar of current liability you just maintain a cash and marketable securities balance of 0.5 dollars makes sense okay fine yeah so this way you need to check the liquidity position of a company by observing the ratios of the company we want to check the long-term financial position of a company whether we have enough money to pay our debts to purchase any assets what is our financial position we have externally funded heavily or shareholders funded heavily to check this we follow these ratios long-term debt to equity ratio long-term debt divided by total equity surely it should be less than one why because total equity is the owner's money so when you have denominator owner's money long-term debt outsider's money so obviously the numerator should be less than the denominator your equity is say for example 5 million and the numerator long-term debt is say 2 million makes sense yeah but it is giving you only long-term debt you want to check debt to equity debt to equity is nothing but total debt to total equity total debt to total equity total debt consists of what current liabilities and long-term liabilities okay total equity means all the shareholders funds preference and common shareholders so shareholders equity like say for example we have uh, uh, one dollar one million of 
current liabilities, 2 million of long term liabilities. This is the total debt. And owner's money, shareholders' funds are 5 million. Makes sense. 3 of 5. So, owner's money is 5 million. And the debt, external parties' money is 3 million. Still, it is less than 1. Makes sense. Makes sense. The next one is debt ratio or debt to asset ratio. On your balance sheet, you have current assets and non current assets. Say we have 3 million and 2 million, total 5 million assets, of which say current liability is 1 million, long term liability is say 2 million, and the shareholders' equity is say 2 million. So how much of debt money, debt money is invested in the total assets of the company? Okay, so total debt capital that is current liability plus long term liability on the total assets. Total debt divided by total no equity, total assets, sorry, total assets. So it is 3 divided by 5. Total debt divided by total equity. And now, if you you have this two million, and calculate what is my equity on the total assets. See, out of five million, your money is only two million. Out of five million, see others' money invested in the business is three million. So you are weak. They are strong. Their investment is high. In this case, we call it as what? The business is leveraged, externally funded. Suppose your asset section says the total is 8 million, current liability is 1 million, long term liability is 2 million, and shareholders' equity is 5 million. Only 3 million external party money is used in the equation of assets. So debt to, debt to assets is 3 by 8. See, only 3 million is invested in the total assets of the business. What is owner's money? Owner's money is 5 million. So owners invested 5 million on the total assets of 8 million. We are strong. Outsiders are weak. Okay. Then debt to capital ratio. So when we say current liability 1 million, long term liability 2 million, uh, shareholders equity is 5 million, total amount is 8 million. Now, what is the total debt? 3 million. What is the total amount we have here? Debt to capital. Debt to capital is the same like debt to assets. So it is 3 over 8. 3 is the total debt divided by 3 plus 5. 8. Same like a debt to assets. So whether you calculate this ratio or this ratio, answer will remain same. Next, financial leverage. We see you now that uh, the assets are 8 million. Total assets are 8 million. 8 million debt capital is 3 million. And owner's money is 5 million. These are the real owners, shareholders. They invested 5 million. And uh, banks, other accounts payable, etc. 3 million. So total assets divided by total equity. It shouldn't be less than 1. It shouldn't be less than one. Okay. See, we mentioned we have 1.6 times of our money in the assets. 1.6 times of money in the assets. Total assets divided by total equity. If it get, gets diluted, no. If it if it is less, if it is more, then you will have an you know impact. Let's say for example, we have 20 million worth of assets. Equity is say for example 5 million. It is going to affect why because your money is only 5 million on the total assets of 20 million. Where is the remaining 15 from? 15 is invested by external parties, bonds, banks, debentures. So you are weak. Debt to equity. Whereas if 
it is same like this but 20 but this time owner's money is 15 others money is 5 okay so this one is heavily financially leveraged see heavily leveraged whereas this business financial leverage is low at any any time if these people create problems see our money is more in the assets we are dominating okay we tell them that okay we will repay this amount in one year time two years time don't uh, pressurize us but here having 5 million in the business your money borrowed money is 15 million you cannot tell them because you become a puppet in their hands you lose your powers you lose your powers because your assets are highly invested by the others this is the end of the session on balance sheet items we'll see in the next session with uh, another topic till then have a good time happy learning